ever wondered how to highlight chord changes when improvising or writing your guitar solos? Today, I'm gonna to show you how. Today's tones are courtesy of the Tone King Imperial Mark II plugin from Neural DSP, who are the sponsor of today's lesson. To try it out for yourself, download your free trial and my Latin Blues preset via the links in the description box. Do you know what a triad is? It's what we're gonna be learning about today, and it's an invaluable tool to have at your disposal as an improviser. If you've only ever tried soloing with scales, I promise you that adding triads to your toolbox will open so many doors for your playing. So a triad is a three note chord that contains a root, third, and fifth. And I'll come back to that later, but for now, I'll just describe the type of chord progression that we're working with today before we do anything else. So this backing track is a minor blues in the key of A. So the chords involved are all minor or minor seventh chords, and there's only three of them in this progression, A minor seven, D minor seven, and E minor seven. Getting back to triads, before I fully explain them, let's just get some triads under our fingers first. Try playing this. It's called a root position A minor triad. You've played that before, whether you realize it or not, because it's part of a minor bar chord with the root note on the lowest string. Now here's a D minor triad. Again, you've played this before, whether you realize it or not, because it's part of the other minor bar chord shape that has its root note on the fifth string. And if we move that up two frets, we get an E minor triad. So A minor, D minor, and E minor. So they all contain a root, third, and fifth. What does that mean? Well, even though we're dealing exclusively with minor triads in this progression, I'm going to explain this with reference to a C major triad. And hopefully it will become clear to you why as we go on. So the root note of a scale, chord, triad, arpeggio, whatever it may be, is always the note that the rest of the notes relate to. It's the first note in the scale, chord, triad, etc., etc. So C is the root note in a C major triad. What about the third? Well, triads are often built from the degrees of a scale. So counting the root note C as number one, if we play through the C major scale, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, let's go back and look at what the third note was. One, two, three, that's the note E. So E is our third in a C major triad. That leaves us with one note to complete our C major triad, and that is the fifth. So let's take a look at what note is the fifth of C. One, two, three, four, five. That is the note G. So G is our fifth in a C major triad. So we've got the root note C, the third E, and the fifth, which is the note G. Okay, now we know what notes are in a C major triad. What's next? Well, I think the next logical step to take would be to teach you about triad inversions. What's an inversion? It's the order of the notes in the triad from low to high. So there are three types of triad inversion, root position, first inversion, and second inversion. Here's a root position C major triad. As you can see on the diagram, it has the root note in the bass, third in the middle, and the fifth on top. Now here's a first inversion C major triad. As you can see on the diagram, it has the third in the bass, fifth in the middle, and the root on top. And lastly, here's a second inversion C major triad. It has the fifth in the bass, the root note in the middle, and the third on top. So root position, root, third, fifth, First inversion, third, fifth, root, and second inversion, fifth, root, third. What I've just shown you are triad inversions on just the fourth string set alone. In the first Bulletproof Guitar Player course, I teach you how to play major, minor, diminished, augmented, and dominant seventh triads across all four string sets, as well as my preferred way of practicing them all to make sure you have no issues visualizing them on the fretboard when improvising. Learning them across all four string sets really gives you a lot of options for both lead and rhythm playing. 
For example, here's 12 ways of playing C major triads within one octave. Now you know how a triad is constructed and you know what the three types of inversion are. So how does this help us get better at highlighting chords in our solos? We'll get to that very soon, but let's first actually look at a minor triad and learn about how it differs from a major triad. So when I described the chord tones involved in the major triad earlier, I just said root, third, and fifth. Well, the full names for the third and the fifth in a major triad are a major third and a perfect fifth. Those terms are called intervals, which are used to describe the space between two given notes. And I could teach you a lot more about them, but all you really need to know for the purposes of this lesson is that a major third is the type of third that occurs naturally in the major scale. So looking at it on one string, the major third is four frets higher than the root note. This is the root note, and this is the major third, four frets higher. A minor triad is different from a major triad because it has a different type of third, a minor third or a flat third. It still has a perfect fifth, but the third is a minor third. And that minor third is a semitone smaller than a major third. So looking at that on one string, a minor third is three frets higher than the root note. See the difference? Major third versus minor third. Let's go back to that root position C major triad to really see the difference between the two. So here's the major version, and here's the minor version. As you can see, all that's different between the two is that third. Major, minor. Now getting to highlighting chord changes when soloing over this A minor blues track. Remember what the three chords in the progression are? A minor seven, D minor seven, E minor seven. Now, a minor seventh chord has a minor triad within it, so we can play lines that involve minor triads for each of those three chords. Also, it's important to note that we are in the key of A minor, and all of these triads, A minor, D minor, and E minor, are found naturally within the A natural minor scale. So you could just play the A natural minor scale over that entire progression, and it would work, it would sound good. But if you really want to sound like you know what you're doing, wouldn't it make sense to take advantage of what I just told you? The fact that those triads are all found naturally within the A natural minor scale. If you can create lines based around those triads when the chords change, your solos will sound so much better compared to just mindlessly running up and down natural minor scale positions with no effort to highlight the chord changes. To help you get started, I've written a couple of lines myself that outline the chord changes of the turnaround in the progression that consists of one bar of the five chord E minor seven, one bar of the four chord D minor seven, and two bars of the one chord A minor seven. So it's hitting all three of the chords in the progression in quick succession. These lines are based around triad inversions that I'm able to visualize on the fretboard when I'm improvising. The first one goes like this. That line was based around root position E minor and D minor triads on the first string set. And a second inversion A minor triad. So I'm basically just arpeggiating each of the triads in a creative way. Rather than just playing that last A minor triad, all of the notes at once, I kind of weave in and out of the notes. I've got another line to show you, but before I do, I just want to take a second to talk about today's video sponsor, Neural DSP. The tone I'm getting today is my Latin Blues preset that I created using their Tone King Imperial Mark II plugin. A lot of players that I know have been hesitant to get into the plugin world because they weren't metal players and all they were seeing were plugins aimed at that modern metal crowd. There were several neural plugins that you could get great blues sounds out of before this one, but this is tailor-made 
for blues players like you and I. The plugin is built around a recreation of the Tone King Imperial, which is a two channel boutique combo amp designed to emulate the tones of old Fender tweed amps. It comes with a pre effects section, includes a wah pedal, a compressor, and two overdrives to give yourself different amounts of saturation and clarity for a solo boost. It's also got a post effects section where you'll find chorus, delay, and reverb. There are multiple microphone emulations to choose from. You can have up to two mics on the cab at the same time and change the mic position with ease. And you can even add in room mics for added ambience. You can also load in your own IRs and there's a graphic EQ if you really want to fine tune your tone. There's also a couple of practical tools like an onboard tuner and a really great metronome for practicing with. My Latin Blues preset along with a trial of the plugin can both be downloaded for free via the links in the description box. So all you have to do to try this tone out with your own guitar at home is go to the description box, download the free trial of the plugin using my link, then download my preset file, open the plugin, drag and drop the file onto it and it should load up and you'll be good to go. Huge thanks to Neural DSP for their continued support of the channel. They really help us keep the show going here and their products make my workflow so much easier. Now let's get back to the lesson. Okay, the last line I wanna show you goes like this. This is also based around root position E minor and D minor triads, but this time on the second string set. So the actual visual shape of the triad looks a bit different. To start, I play this over the E minor, which has got a nice bend going up to the root note of the triad. That note I'm bending to, so no E. So I play that and then basically the same thing for the four chord for the D minor. And then to end that line, I basically just, I can't remember exactly what I played, but it was some sort of A minor pentatonic stuff. There are three bonus lick lessons, tab files, and the backing track waiting for you at bulletproofguitarplayer.com if you want to go further with this type of playing. Subscribing gives you access to both of my courses so you can learn much more about scales, music theory, and how to actually apply it to your playing to break free from the lost intermediate plateau where you've been stuck at the same level for months, years, or a decade plus. You also get access to all of my monthly bonus lessons based on my free YouTube content that you won't find anywhere else. To sign up today, click the link in the description box. Thank you for watching. If this helped, please like and subscribe for more, and I'll see you in the next one.